On behalf of the Arlington Interfaith Network and all of the communities represented here today, welcome. I'm Reverend Laura Martin, Associate Pastor at Rock Spring United Church of Christ and a member of the Arlington Interfaith Network Steering Committee. Poet Naomi Nye writes, where we live in this world is never one place. Today, we are here together as people of different faiths and as people committed to collective good. We're here to mark this one year of COVID lockdown. Where we live in this world is never one place. Today's service is arranged to mark the multiple places where we have lived in our hearts and our world this past year. It's designed around the themes of remembrance comfort, gratitude, and renewal. Throughout the service, you're welcome to engage in response or conversation through the chat feature. Reverend Blair Moorhead had, is serving as our chat chaplain there. And we invite you to begin by saying hello and introducing yourself and your faith community. We also welcome the Arlingtonians helping each other through COVID-19 Facebook group which is hosting us today. And Reverend Alice Toole is serving as Facebook chat chaplain for that conversation. I will be in the role as a guide during today's service, marking each of our four movements while a candle is lit. Now I invite you to relax fully into the space you inhibit and breathe in again the breath of life 
as we begin. We begin today by remembering, by remembering the grief and honoring the lament. Our faith traditions share a common practice of making space for what can only be said in tears and silence. Christian scripture talks about the Holy One who is near us when we have sighs too deep for words. Today, we remember the staggering losses. We remember those who died alone. We remember those who grieved alone. We remember those who sacrificed to bring care and compassion to places where little light fell. Cole Riley writes in Black Liturgies, help us to hold our own tears as sacred, never being too quick to wipe them away or hold them prisoner, knowing that our freedom is entwined with theirs. Today, we light the candle of remembrance, trusting that in our remembering, we are not alone that the divine, by whatever name we call the holy mystery, accompanies us and is nearest to us in just those places of grief and remembering.
to you, God, I supplicate. Hear, God, and be merciful to me. God, be my help. I'm Rav Nathan Freller, Rabbi at Congregation, Eitz Haim, and these are verses from Psalm 30, and have been words that help me find comfort as we grieve through this year. To many faith traditions, whenever we feel unstable, when we need to grieve, we turn to God. Praying can help us evaluate our own behavior, express gratitude, praise, and reinforce the divine values we hold dear, and also help us find comfort, expressing our deeper sorrows and fears. Looking at the Jewish biblical tradition, also shared by many here. Our tradition teaches that we are all created in God's image. This idea invites us to reflect on our own potential and responsibility as human beings. We can offer comfort and help each other as we also grieve. We can hold each other's hands and we can also cry together. When we pray to God to be with us, to be merciful, to help, we remind ourselves of our partnership and our shared responsibility with each other. May we all find meaning, comfort, and support with God and with one another. Hola y buenas tardes. My name is Carlos Dimas and I'm with Arlington Bridge Builders. You know, in reflecting over the slide that we just saw, it is um, all of us have been affected and touched by losses and have experienced loss at different levels and intensity. Some have been grieving, not being able to gather in person. Some have been grieving, not able to be in groups, either restaurants or birthdays or graduations or parties or funerals. Some of us have been grieving the fact that we live in this constant fear and concern of getting sick or infected. Some have lost jobs or sources of income. Some have gotten sick and have struggled getting better. And some have died. And people have grieved, not with them, but in their own home due to many restrictions. If I were to ask you to ask all of you to raise your hands, if any of those apply to you, most likely every hand will go up. These have been lonely, 
challenging, tough times. And although we see a light at the end of the tunnel, a friend of mine said, we hope it is not an oncoming train. No, but, but seriously, what a year this has been. I just wanted to briefly offer a story around the shortest verse in the Bible, which shows the heart of God around grief. If you permit me, it is the story of Jesus going to the home of good dear friends of his, the home of Mary and Martha, and a good buddy of his named Lazarus. He had heard that he was sick, but he had been four days that he had been dead. I'm picking up the story in uh, John chapter 11, verse 32, because it is a powerful story, but I'm just going to read it briefly. It says that when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Now, pay attention to this. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And he asked, where have you laid him? Come and see, Lord, they replied. Now, verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus wept. Then, Jesus, then the Jews said, see how he loved them. But some of them said, could, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept his, these men from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. And then the story goes on into the process of resurrecting Lazarus from the dead, which many people just, you know, kind of um, celebrate and they are wowed by. But I think this is an important part of the story. I think that this is extraordinary and miraculous as well. What somebody is willing to grieve over a friend that is close. Here, Jesus shows his friendship, his care, his ability to relate to our pain, to our sense of loss, with no judgment, no magnificent rhetoric, but a ministry of presence. He shows up. He shows up. He shows up, but he also understands, he listens, he loves. And I hope, friends, that it is comforting to know that truth, that that truth is relevant, that that truth is real, that that truth is immovable, unchangeable, reliable truth that is here and is available to each one of us. Amen. My name is Marita Bastidas. I thank to God and Baha'u'llah for allowing me to say this prayer in Spanish. Gloria sea a ti, oh mi Dios, Señor Omnipotente. Soy testigo de tu omnipotencia y tu poder, de tu soberanía y tu bondad, de tu gracia y tu fuerza, de la unicidad de tu ser y la unidad de tu esencia de tu santidad y tu exaltación sobre el mundo de la existencia y todo cuanto hay en él. Oh, mi Dios, tú me ves desprendido de todo, salvo de ti, aferrándome a ti y volviéndome hacia el océano de tu generosidad, el cielo de tu favor y el sol de tu gracia. Señor, soy testigo de que en tu siervo tú has depositado tu tesoro, y ese es el espíritu con el que has dado vida al mundo. Te pido, por el resplandor del orbe de tu revelación, que misericordiosamente aceptes de él aquello que ha logrado en tus días. Concédele, pues, que sea investido con la gloria de tu beneplácito y adornado con tu aceptación. Oh, mi Señor, yo mismo y todo lo creado somos testigos de tu poder. Te ruego que no alejes de ti a este espíritu que ha ascendido hacia ti, 
hacia tu morada celestial, tu exaltado paraíso y los retiros de tu cercanía. Oh, tú que eres el Señor de toda la humanidad. Permite pues, oh mi Dios, que tu siervo se asocie con tus elegidos, tus santos y tus mensajeros en moradas celestiales que la pluma no puede describir ni la lengua relatar. Oh, mi Señor, verdaderamente el pobre ha acudido presuroso al reino de tu riqueza, el forastero a su hogar dentro de tus recintos, el sediento al río celestial de tu munificencia. No le prives, oh Señor, de su porción del banquete de tu gracia ni del favor de tu generosidad. Tú eres en verdad el Todopoderoso, el Benévolo, el Todo Generoso. Oh mi Dios, tu tesoro te ha sido devuelto. Corresponde a tu gracia y a tu generosidad que me han envuelto tus dominios de la tierra y del cielo. Conceder a tu recién llegado tus dádivas y tus dones y los frutos del árbol de tu gracia. Potente eres tú para hacer tu voluntad. No hay más Dios que tú, el benévolo, el más generoso, el compasivo, el conferidor, el perdonador, el preciado, el omnisciente. Atestiguo, oh mi Señor, que tú has ordenado a las personas honrar a su huésped y el alma que ha ascendido hacia ti ha llegado verdaderamente hasta ti y ha alcanzado tu presencia. Trátala, pues, según tu gracia y generosidad. Por tu gloria, sé con certeza que tú mismo no te abstendrás de hacer aquello que has ordenado a tus siervos, ni excluirás a quien se ha sido a la cuerda de tu munificencia y ha ascendido hacia la aurora de tu riqueza. No hay otro Dios más que tú, el único, el indiviso, el poderoso, el omnisciente, el generoso. Bajaula. Thank you, Maria Teresa, for those words from the heart. One of these days, we hope Zoom will have a Spanish closed captioning function. I'm Rabbi Gila Langner, and uh, here with me also is Jim North from Colami, the Jewish congregation in um, uh, the Reconstructionist Congregation in Arlington. We're honored to take part in this service. So where does comfort come from? One source is our sacred scriptures, as Rav Natan Freller mentioned earlier. The great prophet of comfort in the Hebrew Bible is Isaiah. And in chapter 40, Isaiah opens with the words, Nachamu, Nachamu Ami, be comforted, be comforted, my people, says your God. How much we need to hear this in our own day that God is offering comfort to a suffering nation. And perhaps in our own day, we can understand this as applying to ourselves that all of us can, all of us must offer comfort to one another in all the many different amazing ways that we each are able to bring forth. So allow me to lead you in the chant of these few words composed by Rabbi Shefa Gold, and then Jim will sing it in Hebrew and English. The words will be in the chat. Gila, you're muted. Have I been muted this whole time? No, just, oh, just, okay. just now. <laughs> okay. All right. So folks, sing along with me if you would. From with your muse, your microphone's muted. <clears throat> comfort ye, be comfort ye, my people. Try that at home. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. One more time. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Comfort ye, comfort ye, comfort ye. My people, Jim. Lo 
Archbishop Desmond Tutu proclaims that goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death. And we need these promises of comfort. We need to be reminded that goodness is stronger than evil, love stronger than hate, life stronger than death. And we know from what we have seen this year that these are not just future promises, but a way of naming the present reality. We've seen the ways that light has been stronger than darkness, the way that medical staff and essential workers have sacrificed their own comfort for people whose names they will never know. We have seen the way that goodness has been stronger than evil as people have cared for neighbors, delivered food to strangers. As teachers found new ways to connect with students as driveway celebrations happened. We light this candle of comfort with the hope and the promise that we will continue to be people who wake up and testify every day that life is stronger than death. Thank you, Reverend Martin. My name is Don Rosek and I'm a member of the Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Arlington. And I'll be reading a poem by Rumi. How should the soul not take wings when from the glory of God it hears a sweet, kindly call? Why are you here, soul? Arise. How should a fish not leap fast into the sea from dry land? when from the ocean so cool, the sound of the waves reaches it. How should the falcon not fly back to his king from the hunt, when from the falconer's drum it hears to call, oh, come back. How, why should not every Sufi begin to dance atom-like around the son of duration that waves from impermanence, that saves from impermanence. What graciousness and what beauty, what life bestowing, what grace. If anyone does without that, whoa, what air, what suffering. Oh fly, oh fly, 
O my soul bird, fly to your, to your primordial home. You have escaped from the cage now. Your wings are spread in the air. O oh, travel from brackish water now to the fountain of life. Return from the place of the sandals now to the high seat of souls. Go on, go on. We are going and we are coming, O oh soul. From this world of separation to union, a world beyond worlds. How long shall we hear? in the dust world, like children fill our skirts, with earth and with stones without value, with broken shards without worth. Let's take our hand from the dust grove, let's fly to the heavens high, let's fly from our childish behavior and join the banquet of men. Call out, O soul, to proclaim now that you are rules and king. You have the grace of the answer. You know the question as well. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Wines and I'd like to invite us into a time of prayer. As pastor of Clarendon United Methodist Church, I'll be leading this prayer using the language of my own tradition, but you're welcome to receive it in any way that meets your own. Let's join together in prayer. Sustaining God, you offer us peace in our times of deep difficulty. Through all the generations, you have been our comfort and our hope. You've been with us throughout this year of great challenge and will remain with us as we continue on this journey together. We thank you for the comfort that you've supplied throughout these days, not the comfort of easy answers because we can never find peace in words like this too shall pass or look on the bright side. Instead, you've offered us comfort in the gift of community in relationships that offer us such deep grace in our need. We've been blessed with simple moments of connection while walking the dog or playing with our children or laughing in a Zoom meeting or spending time outside on a beautiful day. We've also been blessed with opportunities like this one, joining in a larger community of care and concern as we seek to meet the deep needs around us and within. We've known comfort in finding ways to celebrate graduations and birthdays or to mourn the death of dear loved ones in community together. Somehow, even in our Zoom funerals, you have reached our aching hearts with blessing and peace. Oh God, we've known comfort from healthcare providers and grocery clerks and all others who've continued to serve so faithfully, even at significant personal risk. And soon, so very soon, we hope, may we all know comfort in receiving a vaccine and then later having the chance to exult in the warm embrace of a friend or grandparent and the chance to join in worship in person all together again. Though we have been walking together through the valley of the shadow of death, you have been our comfort. The gift of prayer has sustained us. The gift of our faith communities has grounded us. The gift of your abiding presence has given us a vision of a future filled with promise. May we be those who offer your comfort to others in our larger community that all may experience the blessings of equity and justice of health and peace. Oh God, our comforter, lead us forward in hope together. Amen. Good afternoon. I'm Sophia Morielli, Director of Transformational Music Ministries at the Arlington Unitarian Church. I'd like you to gather into this time of prayer and music. The song is by John Serrato. Thank you. 
Elizabeth Alexander writes in Praise Song for the Day, Praise Song for Struggle, Praise Song for the Day, Praise Song for every hand-lettered sign, the figuring it out at kitchen tables. Some live by love thy neighbor as thyself, others by first do no harm or take no more than you need. What if the mightiest word is love? Love beyond marital, filial, national, a love that cast a widening pool of light, today's sharp sparkle. Anything can be made, any sentence begun. On the brink, on the brim, on the cusp, Praise song for walking forward in that light. In this year of figuring it out at kitchen tables, in this year of struggle, we praise the way that the mightiest word has still been the wideness of love. We light the candle of gratitude, knowing that praise is what makes us dance and risk and find our way to walk forward in the light together. Thank you, Reverend Martin. My name is Jim Stansel. I'm president of the McLean Stake of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My family and I live in Arlington County and we're grateful and give thanks today for those in this community who have bravely served those around them over this past year. In the Book of Mormon, which our church holds as scripture along with the Bible, a wise leader counseled, when ye are in the service of your fellow beings, ye are only in the service of your God. Serving others furthers the purposes of God, who is our Heavenly Father, by lifting and blessing his children, each of us, and binds us together as a community. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, has often been called the master healer. During his ministry, he healed many diseases of the body, but he also healed people's spirits. He not only promised with his words, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest, but he also put his love into action by showing compassion to sinners and cheering the downtrodden. I'm thankful for those in the Arlington community who have put their love into action and stretched themselves to help heal or nurture our body, minds, and spirits over the past year. Hundreds of healthcare workers not only ably treated those with COVID, but also have comforted patients whose family or friends can't be with them as they lay sick or dying. Hundreds of teachers who use their considerable skills to educate our children have gone the extra mile to provide emotional strength to those that they teach. Many other essential workers in our grocery stores, government, and other places have risked their health so that they could have, that all of us could have the essentials of life. During this pandemic, a young family in our church community wanted to help a man who was undergoing a heartbreaking medical crisis. The family's young children drew crayon pictures expressing their love for the man and telling him to just hang in there. The gift was the highlight of the man's day. It made a difference. Each of us too can make a difference, whatever our circumstances. The divine potential within our hearts to love and bless others is unlimited. So my advice is this, do something. I'm thankful for those who have given so much to help others this past year. May we all stretch ourselves a little more to bless those around us. I leave this with you in the sacred name of him who we worship as the master healer, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Iman, you're muted. Greeting of peace, assalamu alaikum. I'm Imam Ali Siddiqui, a representative of the greater DMV Muslim community. <clears throat> this is a great time and this is a great difficult time. Gratitude is a shukru in Arabic. 
In Arabic, it means thankfulness and gratitude of acknowledgement by humans. It is a highly esteemed virtue in Islam. It may also be used if the subject is Allah, in which case it takes meaning of divine responsiveness. So we turn to God Almighty in this difficult time. Shukr is, all, is to recognize a blessing and display it. The opposite is, it is kufr, which means to con cover, to conceal, and to deny blessings. So we do not deny blessings, even though we're passing through a very hard time. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Inna Allah la du fadla ala nas wa lakin aksar aksar hum la yashkurun. Indeed, Allah is ever bountiful to human beings. However, most of them are not thankful. So, even though we're passing through a difficult time, we should return to God Almighty, to Allah, and thank Allah, and Allah will turn things around as we see it happening. In Arabic, to, al to Allah, Muslims say, Shukr Alhamdulillah, when we are blessed. We thank Allah for the blessing and the gift. When a Muslim thanks a person for a favor of kindness, we say, Shukran, Jazakumullah. Thank you, may, may Allah reward you, because we are not competent, we don't have resources. So we turn to Allah to benefit, benefit from their work. So we today thank all the frontline workers and say to them, Jazakumullah, that Allah give them the reward. One of the 99 beautiful names of Allah is Ash-Shakur, Ash meaning the one who approves or reward or forgive. Quran also called Allah as Ash-Shakir. Allah is, is considered a shakir in the same way that Allah widely extends favors. Allah's shukru is not to be considered thankfulness in a literal sense, rather God's shukru is a compense to human for good, for doing good. So there are hundreds and thousands of frontline workers who are devoted and selfless, selflessly working to help the people who are today suffering. According to Imam Ghazali, Allah is absolute grateful because of his unlimited multiplication of the reward of the pious as they shall receive eternal bliss in paradise. Al Makasid writes that Allah's praise for human, human good deed is praise for Allah's own work, since the good of humans is, is, is his creation. The Quran provides narratives of the prophets of Allah as individuals of gratitude. Their thanksgiving is exemplified by their obedience and faithfulness. To Allah. And today we see that among many of us who are following various prophets are acting just like these prophets of the past. Prophet Ibrahim's obedience and faithfulness were token of his gratitude to Allah. Prophet Noah is described as a man of gratitude, and so is Prophet Ayyub. Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, would say, Alhamdulillah, for Allah's blessing. And when distress event happened to him, he would say, Alhamdulillah, at all times. And this is what's happening to us. Even though we are going to a difficult time, we are still very, we are in gratitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once uh, Prophet Muhammad's wife, Aisha, asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, why do you exhaust yourself when Allah has forgiven you your former and later sins? The Prophet replied, O oh, Aisha, shouldn't I be grateful servant of God Almighty who has given me everything? 
after a whole year of suffering and struggle, I say to Allah, shukru alhamdulillah. We thank you, O Allah, for your blessings. And to the frontline workers who are tirelessly helping the patient and the scientists who discover the coronavirus vaccine, we say, I say shukran, jazakumullah, thank you, and may Allah bless you with great reward. Ameen, ameen. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Washkurullah, 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 Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. In response to that gratitude, we, we sing a song called From You I Receive, To You I Give, Together We Share, and From This We Live. And even if you don't know the song, I invite you to hum along or maybe sing a counter melody or sing uh, some expression of gratitude. taken a walk and really looked around? Have you seen daffodils emerging where just weeks ago the ground was covered with ice? Have you noticed the way that fields that have been brown are greening again? Gregory Orr writes in his poem, this is what was bequeathed us. This is what was bequeathed us. This earth the beloved left and leaving left to us. No other world but this one. Willows and the river and the factory with its black smokestacks. No other shore, only this bank on which the living gather. No meaning but what we find here, no purpose but what we make. That and the beloved's clear instructions, turn me into song, sing me awake. As we light the candle of renewal, we do so remembering that we are the ones turning the holy into song and singing the beloved awake again. Hello, I'm Laura Weil representing um, Rabbi Jeffrey Sachs and Temple Road of Shalom. Soon, Jewish families throughout the world will be gathering to celebrate Passover, our annual festival of redemption. Many of us will sit around the Seder table celebrating virtually or in person to retell the story of our deliverance from slavery and oppression. As part of the Seder, we symbolically open the door for the prophet Elijah to enter 
Tradition tells us that Elijah will return to turn the hearts of parents towards their children and their children toward the parent. This year, more than ever, we add a heartfelt wish for our end of the coronavirus pandemic and a wish to be physically and spiritually together with our families and communities. May this Passover season usher in a new era of health, safety, freedom from fear, and a renewed sense of unity and a common purpose for all of humanity to live in peace. May we all do our part to bring about this redemption, God. Bia amenu bikaov, speedily and in our days. Amen. I'm Carol Green Freeman, pastor of the Wilson Boulevard Christian Church. Upon my focus on renewal, I was led to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 15 through 18, and it reads on this wise, all this is for our benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs everything else. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This scripture gave me strength and it helped me to realize we are renewed day by day by the grace of God, which is the unmerited favor bestowed upon us by way of God's mercy. Our difficulties or our perceived difficulties of separation, mass wearing, the inability to visit our favorite places and friends, particularly the loss of life has challenged us, but from a spiritual perspective, it all diminishes and pales in comparison to the promise of eternal glory that far outweighs the, the pain, the distress, the discomfort, the affliction or hardship. The promise of eternal glory is far greater than any sufferings that we can possibly face or endure in this life. During this Lenten season, God wants us to be restored to good health. He wants to heal us from the inside out. The prophet Jeremiah proclaimed that God will again restore us to good health and heal our physical, emotional, and psychological wounds and bring to fruition a rebirth and a renewal a renewal of his people by way of the power of his spirit. Amen. Imam, you are muted. Yeah, you're, you're muted. I am sorry again. <laughs> so as um, Reverend Lorda was mentioning about natural changes taking place around us as the weather is changing, the, the brown grass is becoming a greener. We see snow slowly, slowly leaving from the mountains. So the same thing happening today that we'll see that not only in families, in communities, in the nature, in the environment, change taking place and it is a renewal. For example, the gift given to us during this pandemic is the environmental, the air has freshened up. I hope and pray that this continues that our air becomes cleaner and cleaner there's a blessing in it. We also see that uh, in, in life, 
that those families who lose their loved ones, God also give them gift later on or sometime in their life, gift of another child. That's the renewal of the family is taking place. There's many ways, there's a process that has given to us in Holy Quran that how we can ourselves renew individually and also process given to us how we can renew our communities and, uh, and the uh, this nation we live in is called, what the, uh, it says that, you know, you, you purify it and you cleanse it. And then when you purify it and you cleanse it, there is the process you have started of a renewal. So we go on in doing that. So I pray to, all, to God Almighty today to help all our frontline workers because they have putting in so much effort and energy. They are tired that may Allah renew their health, renew their energy and give them the benefit of the company of the family pretty soon. And we pray to those people who have lost their loved ones. They may God help them to overcome this sadness, overcome the loss, and may God give them better what been had lost. Amen. Hi, I'm, my name is Arthur McMahon. Uh, I am a member of the Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Arlington. And I'm very pleased to focus on the thought of renewal after such a difficult time for all of us. Renewal is central to our faith as I know it is to other faiths as well. And we are told that purity of heart is the key to that renewal. Our holy writings say, thy heart is my home, purify it for my descent. Baha'is around the world are currently in a period of fasting, seeking to lessen their attachment to things of this world and to grow spiritually in preparation for our new year, Naruz, which starts with the spring equinox. We believe also that the world is going through renewal. Though in these difficult times, it is easy to lose sight of the fact that God has a covenant with us and we will never be abandoned. We are confident that in the future, differences of race, class, religion, and gender will cease to divide us. Instead, there will be a growing realization that all men and women are equal, are united by the possession of a soul endowed by the same creator, and humanity is truly one. I hope you can see some of that spirit reflected in the service today. I certainly do. The, the Baha'i Holy Writings say, when, however, the winter season has run its course, the spiritual springtime returns and a new cycle reveals its splendor. The breezes of the spirit blow, the radiant morn breaks, the clouds of the merciful rain down, the rays of the sun of truth shine forth and the world of being is invested with a new life and arrayed in a wondrous robe. All the signs and bestowals of the former springtime and perhaps even greater ones reappear in this new season. Thank you. The darkest day of the year is in winter. Winter, the season that brings a coldness to the air, to our skin, to the very ground. Winter also contains this darkest day of the year. It's the day with the least amount of light. The winter solstice. The day with the least amount of warmth for the earth, for our skin, for our souls. 
but something interesting happens after the solstice. In the middle of the dark and cold winter, the solstice, and then it gets brighter every day after that. If only our souls could learn this lesson. Pastor Matt with the Arlington Church of the Brethren, and I think about winter and the imagery it brings, and it dawns on me that we have endured a cold winter of COVID this last year. But now we stand in a season more filled with light, with every day that passes, more shots of hope are injected into people's veins. Seasons change. Winter, slowly, now more fully to spring, and we are reminded that the ground may freeze and have ice, but it also thaws and give way to daffodils. The days may get darker, even to the point of feeling like we may be overcome with darkness, but then get brighter. It's not until we experience the darkest day of each and every year that we are freed unto the hope of brighter and warmer days to come. You know, I, I used to preach a lot about the imagery of spring. A time of new life, I said, a time of uh, renewing hope, new life springing all around until a, a dear friend who knew more about nature than me corrected me on this. I've learned from my friend, more life dies in spring than any other time of the year. Not every seedling trying to burst through the ground will make it. Not every bud on a tree trying to reach through will become a leaf. Not every animal born of the spring fever between lovers will survive until summer or fall. Uh, predators diseases, bad weather, bad luck, natural causes, but potential for new life is lost in spring too. I am told more so than in any other season. This seems particularly relevant during this time of pandemic. For our hope for tomorrow, our hope for renewal is not blind or ignorant of all that has been lost. So much has died around us, is dying around us, and yet, and yet we just heard from our sisters, our brothers, and siblings in faith, the many traditions for renewal, gathering around Passover tables in the Jewish faith, telling and retelling stories that um, invite new hope in a renewed sense of unity and purpose, hoping to usher in a new era of renewal. In the Christian faith in this time of Lent, this juxtaposition and contrast between what is outwardly and seen and broken, but we also uh, have this promise that outweighs the suffering of what is inwardly and unseen. And the hope in that might renew us day by day by an unmerited generosity from a God above. From the Islamic faith, a reminder of the process and ritual of purification and cleansing which lead to renewal. And a similar reflection on the mirroring between the internal and the external. The external renewal mirrors our internal renewal. And from the Baha'i siblings, that there is a covenant we have with God and God with us, that we are never abandoned, and what a beautiful hope for the future we heard. And may the clouds of merciful rain down upon us all. And as we take all these traditions in, how can we not listen to the warmth of our bodies as we begin to feel and they speak to us that our days are brighter and warmer and more filled with light? We have endured this cold, hard winter of COVID. And now we stand in spring. 
spring when leaves and plants burst forth from seedlings, when warmth and light surround us more every day, when as humans and animals alike are moved into connecting into more familiar ways. We endured the cold, hard winter of COVID, and now we stand in spring. So see it. Accept it. Invite it. Live into it. And let the renewal of this season wash over us. Become even the current of water breaking through the dry ground within our souls a bubbling spring of renewal within us, washing over us until our souls are drenched with hope, until we drown in new life. Friends, all you on Zoom and on Facebook, Will you join me in a moment of prayer and connection? Perhaps you will place your hands on your heart or hold them out, adopt the position of prayer that feels right for you. Take a breath with me. Let it out. Spirit of life and love, God of many names and beyond our naming. We come together for truly we are together in this moment, seeking renewal. We search in our ancient stories. We look to you, our God, we look around us at the flowers that bloom. We look into each other's eyes. We read each other's chats. We have learned this year that we need each other however we can get it. Spirit of life and love, be with us through sorrow and comfort, gratitude, and even now renewal and hope. Be with us as we feel each one of these, perhaps over and over again, the path not yet sure, the journey still before us, Spirit of life and love, whisper in our ear, a voice still and small, reminding us we have each other. May we remember now and in the days to come. May it be so. Amen. Greetings, I am Reverend Miracle Warren Yossi and I serve as the assistant pastor of the Mount Olive Baptist Church. I pray that you are comforted with hope and renewal with the words of this song.
go say time should buffet though trials have come let this blessed assurance console that Christ has regarded our helpless estates and has shed his own blood for our souls it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul and Lord haste the day when my faith shall be sight, all the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, all oh, the trumpet shall resound and the my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul It is well with our souls. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful song, Miracle. Thank you. And thank you on behalf of the Arlington Interfaith Network. Thank you all for viewing the service. We hope it has touched your heart and soul. And a special thanks to all the participants in the service. I'd like to close with a blessing for all of us. O oh, thou compassionate Lord, thou who art generous and able, we are servants of thine, sheltered beneath thy providence. Cast thy glance of favor upon us, give light to our eyes, hearing to our ears and understanding and love to our hearts. Render our souls joyous and happy through thy glad tidings. Thank you.